Our next speaker is Bushra Furkan. Dr. Furkan is a research scholar in Asian studies, specializing in comparative religions, Quad Islam University, Islamabad. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, F seems to be the key letter thus far for this panel. F as in fantasy, F as in fraternity, and now we thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Hello, how? How are you? I am Bushra. I'm really um, thank you and I'm very happy to see all of you that you are here and we are all gathered here for uh, try to find out the conflict resolutions. And uh, yes, I agree. To find out the conflict resolution is a hard work, but believe me, it's not impossible. The tradition says that there are 70 solutions of one conflict. And we are all here to find out that solution. And I'm also here with you and uh, give the presentation of one solution from them. And that is the Ibn Arabi ideology. Yes, the God says that uh, the God does intend for you ease. And the God does not intend for you hardship. And the Ibn Arabi commented on this that all that we get from the tradition is just merry words. And it is up to us to find how we find out what that means. The question arises, how? How the Ibn Arbi ideology, how the Ibn Arbi extract such types of different interpretation of the Islamic tradition? And how has the uh, ideology cope with the different uh, um, themes and how it's coped the, with the uh, uh, contemporary conflicts and gives the solution? Yes, let's say, and we will take the one look on the Ibn Arabi ideology. Yes. yes. First of all, we consider the base of his ideology. The base of his ideology is the Maqami Muhammadi. It means the station of the Muhammad, peace be upon him and the destination or the destination of the prophet. The next, the main theme of his ideology, that is, number one, the political and aesthetic dimension of existence in the present situation. Number two, the traditional aesthetic and spiritual dimension of existence, it is rooted in the Islamic Sharia with the, on cultural grounds. Number three, aesthetic dimension of human beings. And then four, the, pro the pragmatic, rationalistic, spiritual approach that is cursed to the base of this approach is the tolerance and the acceptance of creativity and flexibility of interpretations. Number five, and this is the last but not least, the science of spirituality. Yeah. The first, uh, the characteristics of this ideology, it is not bounded and applicable universally the main domain of uh, its cultural heritage is to give the understanding of the world historical development and the demand of this formation of this idea, the historical situation of diverse religious and cultural perce perceptions. Yes. Yes. And the two main stands of this ideology that is going uh, that is the spiritual practices and the practical spirituality. And the roots of these domain are, is, and the different, no, it's the, go to the back. You have to mention the next, there are more, four. Yes, this is one. And this is the roots of these strains, are the explanation of the inevitability and the essential goods. The essential goods, there are too many essential things that's uh, essential for our body. The, or the food that we eat that is the essential for our body. And what is the essential of our spirit? That is the knowledge. And the roots of these roots, but it is not bounded with the solely religious activities. That is, these are embedded in the diversity of the human understandings and in the expressions of the spiritual nature. 
Now come to the first theme of this ideology, that is the political and aesthetic dimension of existence. Here, yeah. uh, the question obviously come in, what is, what is the static dimension of existence and what is the relation of the static dimension of existence to the inclination of the politics? Uh, yeah, here's the good example of that I want to give here, that is the Imam Khomeini later, that who has written to the uh, Gorbachev, who is the general secretary of the Soviet Union, and he has presented and he has offered the Islamic political system in the alter, as an alternative to the communist system. And uh, his, uh, uh, and in supporting of his um, offer, he strongly and uh, uh, he strongly uh, give the stress uh, on the uh, ideology of Ibn Arabi. The second theme is the traditional aesthetic and spiritual dimension of existence. And this is rooted on the Islamic Sharia and uh, within the, on the cultural grounds. And the Islamic Sharia basis of this is the uh, positive or the principle of the Maslaha, the inner knowledge of the Islamic sciences, and the acceptance of the creativity and the flexibility of the interpretation. Come to the next. Now, when we come to the principle of Maslaha, in fact, the God commandments, the word wants to implement his commandments uh, through the Sharia, through the Islamic science, but he bounded the Islamic science with the public and the government authorization. And uh, in this example of the act of the um, uh, Caliph Usman, when he had to write, uh, he, he has written the Quran in the one dialect, and that dialect is the, uh, is the Quraysh, the Quraysh dialect, and has ordered to burn all the other scripts of the Quran due to the fear of the sectarianism in the Muslim Ummah. And this gives the very strong understanding of the principle of Maslaha, the principle of the common good. But the problem is, the implementation of this, uh, if the, uh, the implementation of this uh, maslaha, that is the problem of the dichotomy. The problem of a dichotomy is that most of the uh, jurors, uh, judges, are uh, uh, trained with the common uh, with the common rules, and the jurists are most of the trained by the traditional law. The when the jurists makes their decisions and their rules, they are according to the systematic and the uh, on the societal basis. And the uh, uh, jurists, when make them, they, uh, they uh, describe their verdict uh, on the basis of the rules where they, they drive from the Quran and Sunnah. So here is the, the problem. Uh, here I will discuss the punishment of the regime that is executed to the, uh, according to the Hadith, uh, though it is not mentioned in the Quran, that how the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, implemented the Sharia, the punishment of the regime, executed according to that. Why? Although, you know, we know that is the, uh, no, that's a back side of the, this, yes. Uh. Although the Prophet Muhammad is the greatest lawgiver of the time, and uh, he's also uh, go, uh, gave the golden system of the jurisprudence. Uh, in fact, the, the, the woman came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he, she accepted her sin of adultery and demanded the um, punishment of that, the, and she was pregnant. The uh, prophet says, go and deliver the, uh, deliver the baby. When she has delivered the baby, she come to again the prophet. The prophet says, no, she's, uh, he's so small. Go and feed him. And uh, uh, after then, you come back. She feed him the two years. And after she come back, the prophet says, oh, he's, he's so small. Then go back and treat them. And when he grown up, then then to come back, and when she after she come back, eventually the prophet has executed the punishment of that. How? What is the the difference? Excuse me, Dr. Prakan. At I such a critical moment in your presentation, yes. first of all, let me apologize because we are desperately running out of time for oh, this sure. session. Also and if you could, and thank you, I commend you for the depth of your knowledge and your ability to share such a complex and formidable concept. And I uh, ask if you could possibly, in the next five minutes, do justice to the depth of what you were oh sharing sure, with us. Sure, Thank you so Thank much. You very much.
Thank you. Obviously, we are always waiting for it, and we get that 15 to 20 minutes, so we have made that such presentation for the 15 to 20 minutes. So I think even we are getting late, we have to give that 15 to 20 minutes for our presentation, we, because we are all making and uh, making the hard work for this. Uh, okay, they come to the next. The next is the aesthetic. So the different type of the dimensions of that I would uh, I have asked about it. That he gives the different perceptions of the uh, Sharia. That's for giving the different uh, the concept of the acceptance, the cre uh, concept of the creativity and the flexibility of the Sharia. The third point is the Ibn Arabi, the aesthetic dimension of the human beings. That is belongs to the contemporary issues with the global tendencies and the regarding up unpredictable technologies transformation of cultures and politics to go to this. For this, in this, there are the different meanings of that. That is given the different traditional and religious values, devaluating the importance of the natural relations between the nature and the humans, and it gives the different type of the, uh, 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 we get the different type, uh, different uh, uh, outcomings of that. And it is, will the, what will be the develop of it, uh, According to this third aesthetic sense, we develop the aesthetic sense in the human provide them the reasons for the uh, for a rational argument, and it also provide that uh, aesthetic sense for the human beings. And when we go to the practical spirituality, it will uh, control the global tendencies by developing the positive resistance with inevitability. It restrains the traditional rich concept of the relativity through the social and cultural needs. Go to the next. The third, the, uh, the fourth uh, main theme of the Ibn Arabi ideology is the pragmatic, rationalistic, spiritual approach. And this belongs, the, the base of this is the tolerance, and the tolerance regarding the interreligious and interfaith affairs. And uh, it is also goes to the practices of the prophets and the uh, different, because we are here uh, uh, talking about the traditional system. So the traditional system according to the prophets and the disciples, and these also or the thing, and uh, it depends upon the different, the last term, and the different, uh, the God, different commands that do not uh, uh, insist the people to think uh, to come in the Islam, and uh, this is uh, keep them there uh, with a good consultation and some time of this, and this is also keep them in your consultation and turn away from the ignorance. That is next. Yes, this is this all the different types of the dead events that the prophets and the uh, followers of him and the other uh, and the other people and the different events that would happen in the uh, in the country uh, in the world that is uh, that is particularly uh, implement the tolerance and this. Uh, 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 and this ideology it come to the next, and it is also uh, um, implemented on the Safavid period and the Mughal period and Tamarid periods, and the just it, it will um, implement this uh, ideology. The uh, the fourth is the socio political necessity of consensus and the cooperation of the preserves. It preserves the natural environment. It gives the relation between the nature and the human and it's also give uh, and the implement the relation between the human the nature his spirit and his body and the next is the natural between nature and human and the establishment also it is give the uh, establishment of the justice just like the um, in the world the next and the last is the science of spirituality. The science of spirituality gives the particularly related his ideology to the Fatuhat al makiya and it is uh, its magnum opus book, and it, this is uh, uh, implement and gives the such that the knowledge and studies that implement we can uh, um, for. Uh, uh, deriving the solutions of the conflicts, but uh, there is need to uh, extract that uh, education. And the second is, it's okay, the second, sacred poetry, and uh, come to the, take back to the, please, sacred poetry and the spiritual ascension, and it all gives the solutions and the answers to such type of Sufi practices in the reductionist attacks. And uh, click that one, please click, uh, come on and click on it, and this is uh, when we talk about the spiritual uh, ascension that goes to also the ascension of the prophet, and uh, next, 
Kunnes mål. The next. Our next. Our next. The mall. This can can. And uh, this is the end of this. Uh, that's the conclusions. And this conclusion, this is obviously goes to the, this ideology. If we implement on this, on spiritual basis, on ba on uh, bodily basis, and it is also give the solutions of the conflicts. And but the need is to accept the creativity, to accept the acceptance of the creativity. And we have to get the ability to, uh, uh, to get the different type of the perceptions to get and uh, find out the um, uh, solution of that conflicts and uh, but it's on the other side is a reminder of the prospective contemporary significance of his ignorance inscriptions thank you very much and doctor I believe there will be a couple of questions from the audience for you yes uh, maybe I can start with the first uh, doctor uh, first of all thank you so much that was an extraordinary presentation, in my opinion. Uh, when you spoke of uh, a world in which um, Sufism and the tenets of Sufism uh, are practiced, do you believe that Sufism would be the embodiment in today's world of the zeitgeist, the collective, the aggregate aspirations of what you have historically taken us through. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the Sufism, basically, the this ideology, the Ibn, Ibn Arabi, because there is no time to, I, I have uh, um, uh, this uh, show, that, uh, and give the evidences that, did g that gives the different uh, uh, solutions, how it gave the solution, and it is implemented on the Safavi and the periods of that, uh, the previous times. And it was definitely, because the, uh, the ideology and the worldview of Ibn Arabi it's not particularly related to the spiritual. He gave this some different aspects and the values. From that, he extracted the uh, implementation of the contemporary conflict resolutions, given that uh, uh, conflict resolutions and solutions. It is not uh, uh, just we cannot say that, uh, that the spiritualism and the Sufism is uh, separate to the uh, uh, contemporary world. No, but it, uh, it is need to be to understand and we have to read about the uh, worldview of Ibn Arabi and the, his ideology deeply. Then we can uh, extract this. and. For that person, the al fatuhatul makia that is the magnum opus book that we have to read about it. But it is particularly related that it is not not belong to the just spiritual practices. No, it is the spiritual practice and the practical spirituality. That's, that's the combination of the two things that both are belongs to that practical experiences, our practices, our, and what we get from the inner and thus when we get from the inner, we extract for the outer world, and then the outer world become the uh, peace and the uh, peace and love. Uh, we we find the peace and love in the surroundings. Are. Yes, and Doctor, one quick follow-up question, yeah. if I may. Uh, the concept in the French Revolution, fraternité, liberté, equality, and fraternité. Yeah. Do you think there's any either spiritual connection, theological connection, political connection? that inspired, advised from the original template of the world at the time from which all of what you speak sprung, do you think those concepts in any way advised those who took the helm of the French Revolution? Do you think they're in interspersing the concept of fraternity do you think that reflects back? Do you think what you've presented, there's a connection between the two, that the concept of a creative, dynamic spirituality could infuse a political result, if yeah, you would? Yeah. Um, when we come to the aesthetic sense of the politics, the aesthetic sense of the, uh, uh, because I am, talking about uh, the spiritual perceptions that we use the word of the aesthetic sense of politics. The aesthetic of sense of politics gives the perception and gives the understanding of the person that how, that how, 
how he can deal such type of the um, uh, problems that belongs to the uh, political issues and uh, um, through the positiveness of the creativeness, acceptance of the different uh, creativeness and the different uh, um, uh, ways, the uh, acceptance of the different interpretations. And uh, when we come to the such type of the global oh. interpretations, the global interpretations and the global uh, global changings that because of the uh, perception of the Ibn Arbi that he gave that we have to adopt the creativity and acceptance of the creativity and with the uh, and also acceptance with the um, the uh, uh, the person the acceptance of the in. Uh, uh, we get the inevitability, we get the different interpretations of our sacred text within different uh, uh, perception, not with the bounded uh, uh, studies, then we get the uh, um, solution of such type of politics uh, uh, to get for that uh, um, for, from, from his ideology. Because his socio-political uh, concepts particularly related to uh, that the politics because it is um, in our uh, previous time and in, in our history, uh, it is uh, um, uh, through the consensus of the, um, the religious scholars and the politicians and the uh, different uh, scholars of the fields when the both all the fields uh, going to be cooperate each other, going to be understand each other, and we have to take the studies already. Uh, for example, the religious scholars have uh, uh, always, uh, uh, he takes his uh, information uh, and uh, uh, he delivers his decades according to just to take the, um, uh, take his uh, tradition, whether uh, who will belongs to any other religions. Although the other politician and the jurist and the other person who takes his uh, uh, education from his personal field. So we have, we are going to separate all the fields. There is need to uh, the person not only get the study of his personal, his uh, particular field, he have to get the knowledge about the another fields. So in this way, we will not, uh, it is not right to we separate the each other. We have to know about the knowledge of the other person and the other person, then the context and the, uh, the context and the content. Then the both are giving the same point of view, the same vision, then at that time we get the true education, that get uh, the true understanding of the field, and then we can get the uh, uh, solution of this, uh, such type of the conflicts. Well, thank you, That's Dr. Furkan. Thank you. And Dr. Furkan, I think you have brilliantly <laughs> reminded us of the fusion, the fusion <laughs> of the realm of the political and the realm of the spiritual create the greatest dynamic for the conflict resol resolution for all. Yes, it is the fusion of the spiritual and the political dimensions, yes. I hope. But in any event, ladies and gentlemen, if since you're all in New York, uh, I can't help but remind us all of Sufism, exactly what you said, the embodiment, Cahill Gibran, the great poet, so much of the Sufi tradition expressed in poetry, absolutely legendary and brilliant. I highly recommend to each and all for you to review your acquaintanceship with Sufism as artic articulated and expressed in the beautiful Sufi tradition of poetry. Not to mention, while we're all in New York, in Soho, there is a great Sufi shop that not only has many of the works that you have described and referenced, yes. Doctor, but also if you ever want the sweetest treat on the face of the planet, have a Sunni biscuit or a Sunni <laughs> cracker or a Sunni cookie. Delighted and absolutely assured. Thank you so Thank much, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.